what has really struck me is this idea that women's hormones make us irrational and unpredictable and somehow unstable in some ways. But really, women's hormones are very predictable. Like most of us start menstruating around a certain age. Estrogen and progesterone do very predictable things. Testosterone does very predictable things. Getting pregnant hormones do very predictable things. Menopause, they do predictable things. So I really want to dispel this idea that hormones make women unpredictable or that hormones themselves are unpredictable because they're not. Also, when we look at hormonal expression and how it affects us, it's also very culturally specific. In cultures where women have that community and connected support, they don't necessarily go through those extreme emotional shifts that women here might go through. Or in a culture or community where there's red tent, you know, where women can get together and be in a sacred, calm, quiet space when they're menstruating rather than showing up in a corporate boardroom. And it's not that we can't kick ass in a corporate boardroom. And studies have shown that we don't lose any intellectual or academic capacity premenstrually, but it's not necessarily what we want to be doing. We want to be gathering with our sisters and sitting on the earth or maybe just sitting on our sofa and watching Netflix, not competing in a man's world. And so I think that even some of the symptoms that we get around PMS or period pain, I, I often wonder, would they be different in a different context that allows us to be more supported in those natural phases in our life cycle? So this is one of the big things that I'm exploring. I think it's really important to understanding how we reframe our own stories about our hormones and our bodies, our bodies in general and our gynecology and our body parts and our all the things that come with it, whether it's periods or discharge or sex drive or lack thereof, you know, really going deep into all of that. We know that our menstrual health, our gynecologic health is what has now been called a sixth vital sign. So we have our temperature, our blood pressure, our heart rate, our respiratory rate. Pain is considered the fifth vital sign and women's cycles are considered the sixth. So we know that these conditions and symptoms and imbalances that show up can impact us later on in life because those same things like inflammation or microbiome disruption or insulin resistance can then show up later in other ways. There is also a predictability that we can look at when imbalances show up. So for example, if a woman has have really, you know, really achy boobs right before her period and gets menstrual migraines, um, has really heavy periods, we can then say, oh, check, check, check. Those are signs of excess estrogen. Or someone is not ovulating, they're having really short cycle. Or let me back up and say they're checking their basal body temperature and they're checking their cervical mucus and they're checking their, like checking in with how they feel. And they're like, yeah, I'm not getting that peak in temperature that you're supposed to get when you're ovulating and my cycles are irregular. And that tells us very specifically without any lab tests, oh, there's something going on with progesterone or by definition, if you're not ovulating, your progesterone is low. So there's so much we can do just again with that, like peeking under the hood, having a little bit of body literacy and paying attention, like just actually paying attention to the wisdom that our body offers.